And if I couldn't, I'd come up with some variation and I would I would get the right number. But that's me. That's me. And uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I was always always wanted walkie talkies. I always had a pair of uh, those hundred milliwatt no squelch one channel walkie talkies. Some of them had like a little code key. <laughs> oh god. And I remember Jeez, I was probably six or seven years old, and uh, the TV show Flipper. And I used to get such a kick, such a thrill, that the kid would be home. So this is good. And he'd, he'd pick up the microphone and talk to his father out on the boat. Or the two kids, the older brother and the younger brother, would be out on the boat, and they'd be talking to the father I at home this guy. on another boat. And uh, I thought that was really slick. And yeah, unfortunately, a lot of this old stuff gets tossed out. <clears throat> Relatives sometimes don't know what the hell it is. I remember clearly, uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, seeing the uh, RF deck of a Johnson 500 on eBay. And it was, you know, it said, uh, Johnson Viking 500 RF deck only read. And when you, when you read it, when you read it, the guy says, we only have the RF deck. The family was cleaning out the house, didn't know what the what the power supply was, and threw it away. Can you imagine? Um, you know, sometimes people just don't care, you know. So uh, it's you know I I find it um, important to keep this old stuff going, you know. And. Um, if I ever designed the perfect radio bench again, it would have like a second um, desktop Aluminum, pull aluminum rack. That would be like, you know, three Look, or four feet, three, three I feet deep anyway, them. With good four solid to legs so that three. I could just slide out whatever four and those. open it up right there. <laughs> and not have to, uh, as we would say in Brooklyn years ago, See this right here? it over. That the controller to over to the workbench. that controls this transmitter. But I worked out a way to do that. I have these tall, I think they call them draftsman chairs. You know, they're like office chairs with a high stem. And uh, I get the value off, off the table. And, uh, and into the chair. And all of a sudden, the 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 one of the things that's amazing to me, and I, I talk to guys all the time like, like this, uh, they're having a problem, they're, they're looking for a problem, oh, because the audio is distorted, I'm, I'm going crazy. Ship this to, to Japan. Well, no. <laughs> the tubes, and you hear silence. I don't know where to set up and you can this. you picture the deer in the headlights look. Uh, no, I didn't. Well, maybe start no, with that. That's, that's one good thing about these old well, radios, they got I would say. Like um, 60, 70 percent of the time, my experience with the radios that I've owned and in the time that I've owned them, I would say about 70 percent of the time, it was a bad tooth that was causing whatever the problem was. So that's like the first thing, if you're trying to find a problem. I had a no, really tune me up. shorty on my Valiant a couple of years, I don't know, a couple of four or five years ago. <clears throat> And I tested the, the modulated tubes, 6146s, and they were good. And I said, wait a second. You know, if the finals, one of the finals is bad, that would make the audio grungy. And sure as, sure as shit, one of the 6146s was bad. And uh, I changed that puppy out and re-neutralized it, and the audio was fine. So, and, and the changing and testing tube stuff always takes me back to my father. May he rest in peace taking the back panel off the TV set and uh, we'd be taking some of the tubes, usually some of them, not all of them. He knew 